Hi, welcome to our channel True Up. The crisis between Russia and Ukraine has not only thrown the world economy into disarray, but it has also caused a significant earthquake in the communications industry. As the crisis has progressed, nations including as Europe and the United States have slapped repeated rounds of sanctions on Russia. Following the imposition of US sanctions against Russia, Nokia, Ericsson, and other companies have declared that they will cease all operations in Russia in order to follow the Western sanctions line. Currently, Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia, and other communication firms are speeding their progress in 5G communication by engaging in the building and development of communication networks in many countries and delivering industry-leading 5G solutions. Ericsson and Nokia, among others, ushered in 5G contracts in numerous national marketplaces with the assistance of the United States. This made me sigh, if it hadn't been for the initial US sanctions against Huawei, Huawei would have recognized the need of establishing 5G network communications and would have begun working hard to create 5G technology. This strategy not only did not bring down Huawei, but actually pushed it to earn the most 5G commercial contracts in the world. In this regard, Huawei's success must be credited to the assistance of the United States. Following TSMC and Intel, Ericsson took action against Russia. As a result, Huawei is Russia's sole choice for 5G infrastructure. Did the US assist Huawei once more? What does Huawei signify for Russia in the crisis between Russia and Ukraine? First, let us move on Western telecom giants have boycotted Russia. In the views of Western countries, Ericsson and Nokia appear to have emerged as the dominant forces in the global 5G communication industry, as practically all of them have secured more than 145G contracts, according to 5G statistics revealed by the two. The two have received a lot of attention in Western nations, and the decision of collaboration object is mostly between Ericsson and Nokia. However, this does not imply that Ericsson or Nokia's 5G is the world's first level since Huawei leads in terms of fundamental proprietary technology. The fact that these two firms have such strong backing must be attributed to the United States. The United States has forced certain Western countries to line up and abandon their 5G collaboration with Huawei. As a result, only a few 5G equipment providers are available. Nokia is already a European communication behemoth when combined with Ericsson, and it seems sensible to encourage local enterprises to collaborate. Many communication equipment manufacturers have avoided doing business with Russia, but Huawei has supplied 5G and other relevant equipment worth more than $15 million on time to local Russian enterprises as early as the end of 2021. This decision also prompted Russia to name Huawei as its worldwide leader and a reliable 5G provider. Although Huawei's effort is only to respect the prior contract, the assistance this time under Western pressure will definitely send a positive signal to the Russian market, Huawei has the capacity to deliver on time. This delivery may also create a fresh opportunity for Huawei to develop its business in Russia in the future. Ericsson has previously indicated that its primary markets are Europe and the United States, and that its exit from Russia will have little effect on revenue. However, Ericsson's unilateral exit has provided an opening for Huawei. The lack of an equipment vendor niche allows Huawei to easily occupy a significant market share in the Russian market, which may compensate for losses in the European and American sectors in recent years. Everyone will undoubtedly want to work with superior 5G equipment makers when they are free to pick and unrestricted. Huawei is a superior 5G equipment maker than Ericsson and Nokia, and it can participate in the development of 5G networks in Western nations, swiftly establish a 5G commercial network system, and reach the 5G commercial operation stage. It is unfortunate that exceptional strength does not guarantee the chance for fair market competitiveness. However, the situation appears to have altered, as certain titans, such as TSMC and Intel, have taken action have all declared that they would no longer export to Russia, including Ericsson, which has also formally confirmed the cessation of shipments to Russia. Originally, Ericsson intended to build 5G networks in Russia, install and debug certain equipment, and even signed a collaboration agreement with Russia's largest operator MTS in October 2021 to offer 5G equipment for the other party to speed 5G network construction. 
However, Ericsson does not believe it will occur, but from Ericsson's perspective, can it keep mute and not respond? I'm afraid not, because Ericsson is headquartered in Sweden, and Sweden's viewpoint is clear. Sweden's stance has been articulated since the country rejected Huawei's 5G technology. At this point, Ericsson responded, and whether it was choice or helpless, the outcome was destined. It is worth noting that not only Ericsson, but also Nokia, announced on March 1 that they would no longer export to Russia. Until date, the two major communication equipment providers, Ericsson and Nokia, have made unified choices. Originally, Nokia supplied equipment to Russian providers like as MTS and Tele2. However, now that they are all participating in the operation, it is evident that Huawei will be the sole participant in Russia. Huawei is now the sole provider capable of delivering large-scale 5G equipment to Russia. Telecom equipment suppliers such as Samsung and Cisco are either insufficiently powerful or have all worked in lockstep. Huawei has been silent from start to finish, and Huawei and Russia have a history of working together. Huawei may have a better chance of shipping at the booths where Ericsson, Nokia, and other behemoths have ceased shipping. At the same time, I began to question why Huawei had not abandoned Russia. Is there any link between them? Huawei has the ability to participate in Russia's 5G building. I'm curious whether anybody recalls that when the US and several Western nations took action against Huawei's 5G, Russia stated that it would not follow the US and was willing to collaborate with Huawei in 5G. Russia has had various exchanges with Huawei 5G over the last two years, such as employing Huawei 5G for Russian mining firms and initiating 5G testing in Moscow. With these collaboration histories, I believe that if Huawei and Russia have other cooperation ideas, such as employing Huawei equipment to replace Ericsson and Nokia equipment that was initially ready to ship, this is also doable. So, what does Huawei now imply for Russia? From the standpoint of market cooperation, if Huawei maintains a cooperative state, Russia will surely profit much. If Huawei is in Ericsson, Nokia will likely enhance the layout of operations following the stoppage of shipments which will have the impact of assisting in the snow. This will also improve future collaboration between the two parties in all areas. Whether Huawei deploys 5G or develops the software operating system sector, the other party is required to provide substantial assistance. Given Russia's current predicament, Huawei may provide an opportunity to break the impasse and obtain the power to go forward in some sectors. Even without Ericsson, Nokia's support for communications equipment will have little influence. In conclusion, as the situation between Russia and Ukraine worsens, I believe Russia should grasp the West's stance and attitude. Russia will undoubtedly find a way to create a more independent system and integrate trustworthy and cooperative firms into major cooperation objectives. Huawei is a significant and dependable partner. It is unsurprising that TSMC, Intel, and Ericsson are making advances. If these behemoths, who rely on American technology and the market, insist on their own will to act or keep mute, they risk attracting undue attention from the US. They make the decisions, thus they can only accept the consequences in the future. Do you consider Huawei to be a beneficial partner for Russia? Thanks for watching our video. We would appreciate it if you subscribed our channel and gave us a thumb. See you.